Welcome everybody to the Tesla Technology Joining of Science and Spirit talk. We are from the Inarius Educational Foundation. Inarius is a spiritual school, and what Inarius teaches is that each and every one of us are spiritual beings. We are energy beings. That we're actually just a tiny cell of energy in a vast sea of energy. And everybody always asks, well, what the heck does that have to do with Tesla technology? Well, since its beginnings in 1954, Inarius has championed Nikola Tesla. Uh, recognizing that he was an advanced luminary, a visionary who came to planet Earth to help move humanity forward, just as the case was with Jesus, with Buddha, with Muhammad, with Einstein. They're very easy to pick out, these beings who came to our planet from these higher worlds, from these higher dimensions, with advanced knowledge to help us. Over a hundred years ago, Nikola Tesla envisioned what was going to be needed in the future. As Kevin said, he had a higher developed superconsciousness. He was a cosmic visionary, and he could look into the future and see we do not need to be dependent upon oil, fossil fuels, uh, coal, whatever uh, these are, these tend to pollute the atmosphere, pollute our world. And Tesla said, look, I know of a better way. So he discovered all kinds of interesting phenomena with electricity, with energy. He found out that the Earth has a natural vibration to it. And he found that frequency. And then he introduced a certain frequency to that globe that was pulsating. And he was able to stimulate that or make it resonate. And then you could extract that energy. And uh, you would be able to have receiving coils placed around the globe, LA, London, et cetera, et cetera. And you would be able to have free electricity or limitless, or without power, without pollution. And this is what he wanted to design. Technology is coming in. We have to have a certain level of consciousness so that we don't misuse that technology. If, if this technology were to brought here too quickly before we have the consciousness to use it, it's like giving a sharp knife to a little baby. He won't have the wisdom to not hurt himself. Does that make sense? So this is the whole thrust of Unarius, is to find out not only the bolts, the coils, the generators that can be built, we call them cosmic generators, but the consciousness of the people who are going to use it. Because you have to understand a certain level of uh, cosmic consciousness in order to facilitate this technology to be brought into our Earth. Everybody has a higher self. Do you believe that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Every atom has a higher self. It's called the isotope. And this is fourth dimensional physics. This is something you'll learn in Unarius. This is basically under the heading of interdimensional physics. So every atom is pulsating energy in, from the fourth dimension into the third, back and forth. So it's a pulsating of energy going on all the time. So they discovered that they could cause a, a reaction, a fission reaction in uranium. And so when they they didn't know they were doing this, but they inadvertently, without knowledge, severed the uranium atom from its higher self. Just like any individual who has no connection with their higher self, they're like a Hitler or a Napoleon. There's tremendous destructive forces that are released. You follow me? So if you don't have a connection with your higher self, you're going to go down a path of destruction. You're going to become a Hitler. You're going to follow Hitler, you're going to be a Napoleon, etc., etc. So, with this understanding, we need to work in harmony with the higher self of each atom, each molecule. So, all of these atoms are pulsating with a pulse of creation. All atoms, they resonate with the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and all the activity that controls atoms is happening in another dimension. And this is what the purpose, or one of the purposes of Einstein was to introduce our science to other dimensions. Fortunately, there's string theory that's coming about trying to reintroduce other dimensions. So once again, the atomic fission nuclear power stations are destroying part of the atom. And it's wrecking havoc on other planets. And ours. And ours especially. So. When they started experimenting with nuclear fission, at that time in 1945, what happened? You started seeing UFOs starting to come or buzz our planet to find out what the heck's going on. Because we're all connected together. By, by what principle are we all connected together? Each planet connected together. Each 
galaxy connected with one another. What is that principle called? In the Unarius, it's called frequency and harmonics, the law of harmonic regeneration. It's too advanced to go into right here, but there is a connection. So all this energy that normally comes and in, pulses into the atom was is released in one blinding flash when there's an atomic bomb. Okay, so slowly milking that energy in atomic reactors is the same thing. It's slowly destroying the atom. And so what happens, it produces a child, a harmonic, that is poisonous, number one. What are you gonna do with the poison? You got these rods, fuel rods. They're all radioactive, they're, they're all, all, you know, yeah. they have a half-life of what, 50,000 years or something crazy? Longer. Yeah, yeah. look at Fukushima. Right. We don't know the total effect of that, dev of we that devastation. Right. We, we won't don't know in our lifetime. We don't we know won't. yet, we don't know. So it contaminated parts of the atmosphere, the soil, who knows the what ocean. it did the Pacific, who knows if it's gonna reach California or not, we don't know. It already has. So, so we, what we're trying to say is, ultimately, we will have a power tower that will stand 2,000 feet high, go 1,000 feet into the ground, and it will be able to harness this fourth dimensional energy and broadcast it out in coherent laser-like beams of energy to other cities. And at each city, like London or whatever, there's going to be a reverse tower that will take that energy and step it down to household or commercial current. We're gonna demonstrate that today. This is a simple little uh, demonstration. We don't say Tesla coils are used for power generation. We just say it demonstrates a very important principle of frequency. And this is one of the things that Tesla introduced to our physics is the importance of understanding everything has a vibration and a frequency. So what we have here is a Tesla coil. And, um, and we're not going to get too deeply into it, but there's a couple of things I find very interesting. Can you take this? Yeah, go ahead. This one's called the, the uh, secondary. This one David is taking off with all the windings on it. This one's called the primary down here, the shorter one with the fatter wires. Now, I'm going to lift this up. I do this every time, and good thing I'm working out. Okay. You'll notice there's no wire going from the primary to the secondary. The secondary is over there on that table. Right. Okay? Yeah. So how does the electricity get there? Inductor. Induction. What that means is, is that this coil is generating, is taking power from the wall, and it's stepping it up. And then this one that is uh, in resonance, is in tune with the primary coil, steps it up again. Okay. And because it's in tune with the, the first one, it's able to step that electricity up, and we have these lightning bolts, small lightning bolts coming off the top. Well, there's a very important principle with this as well. And this is what Tesla understood, because he told people, uh, when they asked him about you know, how you, you, you use your consciousness, because if you read about him, he was able to do things that most of us don't understand or couldn't do. He said, we are simply beat frequencies oscillating with other beat frequencies. And he was able to use his mind. He realized, if I have a thought that I think is original, if I really pay attention, I can trace that thought back to an experience from my external environment that is causing me to think that way, okay? So what's that got to do with this? Well, if we are like these coils, if we are energy beings, we're electricity, what we imbue in our life, what we surround ourselves with, is affecting our consciousness all the time. So that's why it's very important, and this is what Unarius talks about in its, in its uh, books and its lessons, is learning how to use our consciousness in a positive way, you know? And, and there's a very important reason why people have a difficult time possibly using their mind in a positive way. You say every, you, I mean, you go everywhere and they say, well, you know what we need? We need more love in the world. We all need to be positive. So that guy cuts me off, and then I'm angry. And, well, there's a reason why we have those different reactions. It's because what we talked about before, this energy body that we've all put all this information into over many, many lifetimes, making us who we are right now. And we're constantly pushed from one situation to another by that energy body, by that information that we have put into that energy system. Okay, So that energy system is feeding us information, and if we're not objective, we don't know why, we just react. You know, you ever hear or talk to somebody and say, well, I can't stand my boyfriend, I can't stand my girlfriend, but I can't break up with them. 
What's pushing them together? The past. The past. That energy, that situation, that experience that they're trying to resolve between each other. You see? And once you can really begin to understand where it's coming from, then you're able to decipher that and let it go and move forward. So again, in the same situation, when you think in those terms, this is why Tesla was so brilliant. Because he had developed that energy system lifetime after lifetime, developing his engineering abilities. Understanding that it's much better to work in harmony with the universe rather than fighting against it. Okay. So just as this system works, we're the same way. We're constantly aligning our consciousness to either something positive or something negative. You see? And our life manifests what we've decided to stress, what we've decided to accentuate. Do another experiment. I'm going to hold this. You take this fluorescent light in your right hand. Hold it out there like the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> the Statue of Liberty, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay. That is awesome. All right, now we keep, we keep, keep daisy chaining people. The bed, Based on the strength of this, it'll light up two or three more people. Oh, and the end person will have a lighted light bulb in their hand. This is the way Tesla lit his laboratory in Manhattan, New York. People, visitors who would go and visit him, they would be amazed at where the light was coming from. They asked him, well, it was all radiant energy that was all diffused. 